How can you hear me, Kathy? Do I sound good? All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Ontario Science Center and the Hot Zone. My name is Harrison, and we are going to get started right now with me reading your minds. That sounds scientific, right? It is. Very scientific. Can I read your minds, guys? Can you guys come help me? Good. Okay. I want you to think of a number. You can multiply 9 by anything from 1 to 9. So you can multiply 9 times 6, 9 times 7, 9 times 9, 9 times 3, whatever you want. Whatever your answer is, I want you to add the two digits in your answer together. Now I need you to subtract 4 from your answer. Now here's where it gets a little bit complicated. Each number is now equal to a letter. So if your answer is 1, it's the letter A. If your answer is 2, it's the letter B. If your answer is 3, what letter? C. If your answer is 4, what letter? D. If your answer is 5, E. If your answer is 6, F, and so on. So, everybody knows their letter now. I need you to picture your letter in your head. This is how I read your minds. Just picture your letter, your letter only. Everybody is picturing their letter. What is the first animal that pops into your head that starts with that letter? Don't say it, just think it. And that animal has appeared in my notebook. What's this word say? Elephant. Elephant. What animal were you thinking of? Elephant. What animal were you guys thinking of? Elephant. What animal were you guys thinking of? Elephant. What animal were you guys thinking of over here? Elephant. Elephant. Dog. There's something wrong with your math. <laughs> elephants. You guys are all thinking of elephants. How was that? Nine times table, if you add the digits, it always adds up to nine, so like That's right. minus four becomes five. That's right. And five is the and so, elephant is just the most common one. Okay, you're right. That's how it works. I know that everybody here, if you do your math right, you're going to get to the number five. That's the trick, and everybody's thinking of the letter E, and then everybody, or the vast majority of people, think of elephants. It's interesting, isn't it? So I didn't really read your mind, but I did some math. So math can be a lot of fun. When you hear a word, when you hear somebody say something, like our example up here, the word jazz, there's a particular brainwave pattern that runs through your brain when you hear that word. And researchers can detect that, they found. So if you all hear the word jazz, there's a brainwave that goes through your head. And if we had you wired up to this computer, we would see that brainwave pattern. You know, they imagine that we'd be able to use this sort of thing for people who have had strokes, or something like Lou Gehrig's disease where somebody's not able to talk because we could know what they're thinking of talking. Because even if you've had a stroke, maybe you can't physically move, but your brain can very well be working just fine. So this is a very useful technology to be able to communicate with people who can't otherwise communicate. Pretty cool. Folks, thanks very much for stopping by. If you have any questions at all, my name's Harrison. In five minutes, we're gonna be doing something really special. I've pulled my friend Fred out of the closet and we're going to have a bit of a conversation with Fred. It's called a Fred Talk. So if you're interested in biology at all, stick around here. Anybody else walking in, come grab a seat. We're going to get started with that in five.